Hey, welcome back to Love Wins, where the truth matters because it's the truth that sets us free. Uh, we interrupt the regularly scheduling programming of our series on fear because I'm frustrated again. I started this channel because I was frustrated by the fact that the majority of those in my church who are supposed to be preaching the good news still believe that their performance and perfection has something to do with their salvation. Not only is that frustrating because they believe that, but they're perpetuating that belief on anyone else who's trying to get to Jesus, which is even more frustrating. And this last month on January the 30th in our official church magazine, the Adventist Review, this article was published and I'm actually going to do something unusual. I'm just going to read you the article. I can't say it any better myself and she says it very well, so I'm just going to read it to you. A heartfelt plea to my fellow Adventists. <clears throat> Keep Jesus front and center when witnessing. My friend Carrie called me today to tell me about a health expo she attended, put on by Adventists in her hometown. I should have been overjoyed to hear that my friend, not a member of the Adventist faith, had attended and even helped at this event. And believe me, I was happy she had gone, and that my fellow Adventists had found this way of reaching their community. But I was also concerned. What had her experience been like? Had it been a faith-building, encouraging time for her? Or had it been like too many other times? You see, I feel a little protective of Carrie. I first met her several years ago in a small town in another country. She was a homesick Canadian, and I was a homesick American, both struggling with the day-to-day -day challenges of raising toddlers. We met through a mutual friend who assumed that we both spoke English with similar accents and seemed to be religious types. We must be basically the same. Carrie was a devout member of her religious group, and I was a long, lifelong Adventist. During the next several months and years, we, along with our husbands, began a long journey of deep discussions and study. As a result of our shared journey, Carrie and her husband both came to the conclusion that the religious group that they had previously identified with was promoting some serious errors. They made the agonizing decision to leave, knowing it would be very hard for their family to accept. They left the supportive and dignified religious community they had loved for many years, exchanging it for our very small, <clears throat> rural Adventist church. Things started out well enough there. The Adventist members welcomed them with open arms. And even though the singing might not have been exactly on key, and the discussions might have at times been lacking in theological brilliance, Carrie and her husband appreciated the obvious sincerity of the people. Carrie and I continued to study together, and a whole new world opened before her eyes. She began to fall in love with Jesus and with the beautiful picture of God's character that she found in the teachings of Adventism. A God who loves us unconditionally, despite what we do or don't do. A God who knows our need for rest and offers us a sanctuary in time every seven days. A God who longs to restore the intimacy of Eden and who will come to take us home to live with him forever. A God who is both mighty and transcendent, yet intimate and personal at the same time. Carrie began to consider joining the Adventist Church, but because of her past religious experience, she shied away from making a formal commitment to a human organization. She continued to attend church, study her Bible, and ask questions. Then suddenly, life took some unexpected turns. In the space of a few months, my family moved across the country, and Carrie's moved back to Canada. As she visited a variety of Adventist churches looking for a church that felt like home, here are some things Carrie experienced that left her bewildered and, with, <clears throat> and me with a growing concern. A Sabbath school class in which the focus was entirely on politics, while both the Sabbath school quarterly and the Bible remained firmly closed. Comments about how silly evolutionists are. Carrie's husband currently believes in evolution and would have appreciated a candid and respectful discussion of the issue. In a tiny congregation, Carrie's family attended for several weeks a very pointed sermon about, quote, People who sit on the fence, quote, while the speaker continued to glare directly at Carrie and her family at regular intervals. Discussions about the COVID-19 vaccine being the mark of the beast. 
Carrie's husband is a doctor who recommends the COVID-19 vaccine to his patients, and comments to this effect left them both upset. During the height of the pandemic, a church where not one person was wearing a mask despite a government mandate to do so, these well-meaning advocates of personal freedom may have felt they'd gained a victory, but they lost an important opportunity to minister to Carrie, who quietly left, not wanting to expose her family and her husband's elderly patients to a bug she picked up at church. Discussions about food from both sides, with some Adventists advocating an organic whole plant food diet and others telling her there was no reason not to eat pork and drink alcohol. Music so loud and lightning, lighting so dark that she felt she was back in the nightclub she used to frequent before joining her, own, her original religious group. Impassioned appeals to sell everything and move to the mountains and live off the grid to avoid the upcoming Sunday laws. Given this background, you can imagine why I was a little apprehensive when Carrie called to tell me about the health expo. How had it gone for her? What had her interactions with Adventists been like? Surely this outreach must have been a positive experience. As it turned out, there were some positive elements. She thought the idea was wonderful, and she was glad she could volunteer at an event that would truly help the community. But three things stood out to her that left her scratching her head. During setup, everyone was scrambling, and, thi and things seemed disorganized. Carrie suggested to the leader that they stop and pray and ask for God's presence but was hurriedly told that they didn't have time to stop and do that. They needed to keep working. During the event, an Adventist woman sought her out and insisted that she and her family needed to move to the country immediately to avoid, quote, the time of trouble. The woman was very insistent and kept coming back, even though Carrie politely declined to continue the conversation. Another Adventist told her that Ellen White had predicted September 11th, 9-11 and insisted that this was vital information and she needed to be aware of it right now. She then told me with sadness in her voice that she and her husband are planning to join a Bible study group with a group of Christian professionals that meets each Sunday. She is convicted about the Sabbath and will continue keeping it at home. She also admires the Adventist understanding of Scripture, but her family won't be attending an Adventist church anymore. It's just too confusing and painful and they need some support from Christians whose main focus is Jesus. I wanted to weep, not because I think Carrie is lost, but because, in a sense, I fear that we are. How have we lost our focus on the essentials? My fellow Adventists, members of the church I love, we can do better. We must do better. There is a carry in your church right now, and also in mine. Someone who is seeking to understand the teachings of the Bible, who wants to know what it looks like and feels like to have a vibrant relationship with Jesus, who needs to hear the good news that Jesus is coming back to restore all that has been lost through sin. This is the message the world needs to hear. And it's also the message we have been entrusted with as Seventh-day Adventists. Anything else is a distraction from what we have been called to share. I implore you, point Carrie to Jesus. Show her what it looks like to live a life of faith, to trust Jesus with our time, our finances, our relationships, all that we have and all that we are. Now in the end times, and throughout eternity. There's no copyright infringement on me reading that to you from our magazine. It's a free publication available to anyone who's in the Adventist Church to have and to share with anyone else. I just wanted to read it as it was, so that you could see that what I'm seeing and feeling, I'm not alone. It's not my imagination. And it breaks my heart that so many of the people who are supposed to be lifting up Jesus to the world are lifting up anything and everything else but. I don't know where it's going to go from here. I'm just trusting that God is amazing 
and that he will do what only he can do. And if he could bring good out of the Jewish mess that existed when he was here, he can bring good out of the mess that exists now. We'll see you next time as we continue our series on faith and fear. God bless.